Hello, seekers, confessors, wizards, sorceresses, and Mord Sith. And welcome to the Sword of Truth podcast, the chapter by chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a tricky craft brew on the side. I am Nate, and I'm here with my two time traveling companions, Jade and Aaron. Hey, hey. Goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha, tricked ya. <laughs> and today we're being ambushed in part five of Dead of Bones. Dab. Yeah, first of all, Dob. Uh, Dob. Second of all, can we not? Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, that was kind of a dumb thing for me to say because uh, if you know about an ambush, it ceases to be an ambush. I just want to do the tricky part. I just don't want to do just the, the ambush tricky part. part. Yeah, I'm going to stay here. You guys go ahead. Rogue that you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay here in this wonderful tavern where everything is safe and nothing bad has nice. ever or will ever happen. Cozy and warm. Yeah, it's almost as if it's just on some sort of cyclical loop that just people come in, they get their beer, have a good time, leave, and then it happens again. Yep, and everything's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you listening along on audiobook, uh, this is going to take place from about two hours, five minutes to about two hours, 37 minutes. Yeah, this one is a bit shorter. Oh, but a lot oh. fucking happens in it. <laughs> Some thunder from upstairs. I'm not sure what that was. All right. If we've got our beer. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, uh, Jane, here you go. Thanks. See, she's so much nicer to you after you just started using her name. Mm. <laughs> I know, I know, playing under protest. <laughs> I digress. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, when we last left, Zed had just given instructions to Delora to take to the army that if his plan fails, they have to attack the Deharans. And yeah. we know that that situation is not going to end well for them. Yeah. Well, especially when he had that little pause in there where he's like, um, if it, well, I mean, yeah, if it fails, um, attack the Deharans. <laughs> I guess start <laughs> hitting people with stuff. I don't know what else you're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Abby leads Zed to town and they use a path instead of the road to provide for better cover, mm -hmm. which is smart. It's something we've talked to before keep yourself hidden a little bit and not right out in front of everybody. Yeah, if you're trying to sneak into some place, don't take the highway. Like, you need to sneak in through the back roads. The byway. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't actually know what a byway is. I should look that up. <laughs> it worked for the joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, suddenly, a figure in a hooded cloak appears out of nowhere, knocks her out of the way, and attacks Zed with a knife. He manages to disarm his attacker by flipping them into the brush. So Zed, uh, we know that he was like a still a spry old guy in the books we've already read. This is young Zed who is able to move around. This is where like he flips the attacker and then, oh no, his shirt magically got ripped open and yeah, eight pack. Oh yeah. Eight pack abs, <laughs> chiseled chest. Be like, oh yeah, I'm a wizard, but I work out three hours every day. There's <laughs> no getting around that. Yeah. Healthy mind, healthy body. It's two, it's two sides of the same coin. He has to eat so much to yeah. keep it going. He's, he's worried, right. Yeah. He's worried about his macros. <laughs> being a furnace. <laughs> so much to being a wizard is solely attributed to uh, core strength and intelligence. It's incredible. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> well, as Zed's hand lights up, Abby becomes painfully aware that this is the moment that she had brought Zed into, right? This is the ambush. These are the people coming to collect him. Mm -hmm. And she screams for him to not use any magic, but it's too late. Zed had already casted a spell. That matters because immediately <laughs> the spell is thrown back at Zed and he crumbles on the ground in pain. Ah. The figure removes the cloak and it's revealed to be a Mord Sith. Everything just sexy got a lady. little sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were fighting. Now we're sexy fighting. <laughs> so, Aaron, when you got to that reveal. Yeah. What was your initial reaction? I took roughly a 76 second break. <laughs> well, we won't ask what you did, but I'm glad to hear you were excited about it. I was thirsty. My mouth, <laughs> I had to get a sip of water because my mouth was dry. You do sound thirsty. <laughs> it's almost as if 
little horny Terry had snuck in here because he was also thirsty. He was like, you know what we need? We need some tight leather. That's going to solve a lot of this. I have said my main critique of most books, not enough tight leather, <laughs> which I never said during Harry Potter because those are teenagers. <laughs> I mean, I think it does help if you're thirsty because it does make your mouth water a little bit, mm. you know? Well, then there's the reveal to Zed because she looks at Abby and tells her to leave now that her work is done. Yeah, her part is done. Uh, like, hey, we had this whole deal. Like, don't don't say it out loud and yeah. make me feel even worse. <laughs> don't call me out on this. Let me be like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, not even like, don't even, it's not even about making me feel bad. Don't call me out in front of the people. Let me continue to play both sides. Don't yeah. fuck me over. Nice job, comrade. Fuck you. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know what you're talking about. And Abby, she just scuttles into the grass. She's just like, ah, fuck, and gets out of the situation. But yeah, that's what would be going through her head if I were her. <laughs> the word scuttle just... <laughs> Scuttle, yeah. I just, she crab walks into oh, the grass. <laughs> she immediately turned into a cartoon version of herself and took the form of a crab. <laughs> And hands up in the air like pincers, walked sideways. See, I went the other way again. I was thinking like a ship, that you scuttle a ship. The whole yeah. plan just goes to shit and sinks. And you're like, ah, fuck. I know I had an idea when I got in here, but now just abandon it all. Yeah, you're three quarters pirate, so it makes sense that you would think that. But for I... the rest of us, <laughs> we went crab. Crab. Full crab. Full crab. She went full crab. We haven't eaten yet. I suppose that's warranted. Well, she watches as the wizard writhes and screams in pain and tells him that he's made a big mistake. She'll torture him tonight, and in the morning, they'll watch her army destroy everyone. Mm, bad guy monologue. Bad guy Love monologue, yeah. Those. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to make this person watch this thing, and they're going to go, oh no, before I do it to them, and then we're going to go find another guy. Here's where it gets crazy. This other guy? He's got nothing to do with any of this. I'm going to make him watch the whole thing. And the linchpin is this one thing that we can't have fuck up at yeah. all. So, you know, you're going to be dead, though. So you can't do that. Like, we're here. We have an hour until D-Day, right? So, like, don't. Get, it's going to take too long. You know you're not going to do all of this. If I'm a bad guy, I'm not doing all of this. <laughs> Well, that's, that's why all the good bad guys don't do this. <laughs> that's They just get right to the bad thing. They just yeah. kill the bad the, yeah. the person they're trying to kill. Hey, Most maybe effective it's, bad maybe guy Maybe it's different ever. this time. Maybe she'll bad guy monologue and then be totally fine. Or the one time ever, she'll bad guy monologue and then be totally right. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to do this. Oh, shit. Then she did that. Okay. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. After she's done torturing him, he's going to be brought to Panis Rall to watch his daughter's execution. Look, I didn't even get all the way through the note. <laughs> there it is. We're going to bring you there. You're going to have to watch somebody else. It's a whole fucking thing. Uh, they're going to bring him to Panis Rall to watch his daughter's execution and be tortured until eventually begging to be killed himself. Mm, yeah. That's, that's a good that's a good bad guy monologue. And you know what? Here's the thing. It's a lot shorter than the thing I was joking about them <laughs> saying. They could probably actually do all this. They could, but also, yeah, it's just showing your hand to the to the people before the bad. You're like, oh, you're not going to do this because we're going to have you under hand. But see, if you killed me, right, there's no way that I could prevent you from doing whatever the fuck you want. But you're going to keep me al alive, and now I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. You told me all the things you wanted me to do, that you were going to do. And they do have to show their hand ahead of time to lure Zed. They're like, hey, we have your daughter. That's the only reason he's coming to your doorstep right now. So you have to let him know all the parts you have in play to make the thing go, which, to make him come to you. Which is kind of interesting because that at least like as of what we've read so far, that's not why he's there. Right. He's there to help Abby, not to help his daughter. Exactly. So like already it's like, you know, it feels like there's already might be something going on here. Cause like, yeah, bad guys. I mean, bad guys monologuing. It's, it just, yeah, keep going. I will just real quick. I just want to say in the last uh, chunk, we mentioned him talking about how this is all going to be over soon. That was actually, he was actually saying it in such a way, like, please let it be over. So Zed is like, mm -hmm. he's done at this point. Yeah. He's doing whatever he has to do to finish this. And he doesn't care if he dies. <laughs> His, his fucks have gone. Yeah, yeah. He has no <laughs> care in the world at this point. So when she's like, oh, you done fucked up. It's like, okay, we'll see. <laughs> 
Behold thine empty satchel of fucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sack. I give none. It's a sack. A sack. I apologize. <laughs> you know, we were talking about this off air earlier. I'm just going to throw it in here because it came up. We're assuming that if bags is a swear word, <laughs> then then sack may be somewhere on the list, but there's also like satchel. Pouch. There's pouch. Yeah. yeah. And what? Fanny pack. What? bag is associated with what swear word might be interesting to figure out yeah if bag is fuck (laughs) see maybe it's not even that maybe though we did just stumble on the answer maybe the reason that it is a swear word is because it's a stand-in for a phrase and the phrase being bag of fucks (laughs) oh i see okay (laughs) okay shorten okay (laughs) that's fucking great yeah, uh, we should we should sit down and try to figure that out. One we can day. do that. We'll we'll create a chart. It'll be <laughs> fine. Disgusted at the thought of working with people that would do this, and terrified about what life for her daughter might be like after all of this, Abby finds the knife that had been tossed into the weeds during the scuffle. She tells herself it's just like butchering an animal, and prepares to stab the moored Sith. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Good idea. She's a fucking rock star. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, after, well, after, you know, not being a rock after star. After being kind of the bad guy for a minute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's terrified. This is what yeah, it comes down coerced. to. She was pressed and threatened into helping these people out. She didn't really want to do it, but she's not like strong enough inwardly yet to be like, no, that's fucked up. I'm going to blow up your spot. So she just kind of, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do the thing as long as I'm okay now. And now she's in the spot. And I think she had realized this is the moment, but didn't think about ahead of time what it was going to look like. And then, of course, with the Mord Sith being like, hey, good job, buddy, kind of also blew up her spot. Because in my head, she was kind of thinking, as long as they don't say that specific thing out Mm -hmm. loud, I can feign ignorance and do my part and not have to make any enemies. Yeah. Absolutely. It is wild to me that she so quickly, like, I, I get that it's the moment, right? Like it, you're seeing this person be t- tortured in front of you and hearing what's going to happen to him and his daughter. But she so quickly is like, oh, I got to kill that bitch. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm going to stab that bitch. We're turning to murder. Yeah. I think it's like we kind of talked about in the last part. There's a difference between sitting at this this table discussing giant philosophical things and then going to eat pizza. Abby was sitting at a table and then going to go eat pizza, except now she's in it. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden she's like, oh, yeah, I need to save him. That's the right thing to do. I want him to save my daughter. Then they threatened to kill my daughter. I just went gave into demands. It's time to fight or flight, and I'm going to fight. And the fun thing... That we know about Mord Sith. And, yeah. I mean, they're they're tough bitches, okay? It wouldn't be an easy fight. But if you catch her by surprise, oh yeah, and stab her real good in the throat, you just get the aorta in there, you know, she's go- she's done. I mean, you're gonna have to, right? Because if you don't, like, look, if yeah. you don't kill her on yeah. that first she's strike, fuck you up. you're gonna have a bad day. But that's like the one thing you can do yeah. to a, to a, like anybody could do to a Mord Sith is just fucking stab them where they're not armored and then they're done. So that is that is an interesting thing that she does have a chance. <laughs> She's Not got a chance. Yeah. She's getting herself psyched up for it right now. Yeah. Right? She's kind of behind going for the sneak attack. I'm assuming she's fucking hyperventilating. And that's when a hand clamps around her mouth. <laughs> and she's yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she's told to hush. That's why I was thinking the hyperventilating thing. <laughs> she, like, she gets told to hush because she's breathing too loud. Look, <laughs> Abby, you're not sneaking up on anybody, okay? <laughs> She knew you were there. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> well, she Someone's turns. sneaking up on me or there's a monkey around. <laughs> <laughs> like, it starts with the hyperventilating, but the, as you get amped oh, yeah. up, you start like, yeah, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. We could have given you the benefit of the doubt, but then you started whispering aspirations to yourself <laughs> yeah. to calm down. <laughs> we knew what you was going powerful. on. You are powerful. It's just a chicken. It's just a chicken. <laughs> Well, as she turns her head, she sees violet eyes looking back at her. The Eh. mother confessor Eh. silently commands Abby to get away. There is thunder without sound. Mm. And then the mother confessor turns and unleashes her power on the moored Sith, leaving the woman screaming in pain under the mindless control of the confessor. The mistress. Yeah. Got her, dude. (laughs) 
we we had sexy fighting. Now we have sexy victory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This was the uh, what's it what's it called the chick fight right the one uh, Terry Goodkind had to throw it in here I'm there's a term <laughs> <laughs> God damn it <laughs> girls fighting Wrestling? really no like, <laughs> like you know are you talking about mud fights No not necessarily mud fights <laughs> I I don't, I, I don't know the term I'm looking for please about. someone. <laughs> You no, went to high school. About. Remind me of what this is because I don't cat remember. Fights? Cat fight. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I haven't used it like in a really, really long time. I would, yeah, this is a Chicks cat fight. Fighting. Yeah. Good kind was like, hey, MC against Mord Sith. Oh, Here it boy. is. This is how it would go down for all the people that have wanted okay. to see this happen but hasn't yet. Uh, this is what happens when oh, a mother confessor yeah, gets true. a Mord Sith. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you can't do it to Kara or any of them. That's fucked. But we don't know this one. Yeah. Yeah, fuck this one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Abby is in shock. She had never actually seen a confession before. Zed pulls Abby away from the groaning Mord Sith so the mother confessor can get to her grisly work. (laughs) I was just going to say, I do feel like somebody, like, maybe not right now, obviously, emotions are high. But at some point, somebody should let her know, hey, every confession, like, it might hurt a little, like, oh, there's a confession, like a concussion to the air, Thunder right? without sound. But everybody doesn't scream in pain immediately. Like, I know that she gets told exactly what happens to Mord Sith here in a minute, but, like, her initial vision of what happens during a confession looks terrible. Like, yeah, that would, oh, yeah. Like, you, you thought you were getting cool with Mother Confessor, right? She's not that scary of a fucking chick, and then you see her do that, and that's what sh- she's fucking named yeah, for. And it's on a Mord oh. Sith, which is way worse than what happens to other that's people. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, at some point, you know, that's not how it goes every First time. First one's the worst yeah. one, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it does come up here in a minute, so I, maybe I'm just speaking out of turn, but there's like, no, oh my God. Yeah, there should be a conversation had where it's like, hey, that doesn't always happen that way. Yeah. I just want you to know. Yeah. So if it's an innocent person, they're not being burned a lot, you know, <laughs> every time. The mistress thing stays. Yeah. That that's does still yeah. happen yes, every yes. time. Yes. Well, after seeing that happen, seriously regretting her actions at this point, Abby apologizes to Zed. Or should I say, the trickster. Uh Zed (laughs) knew there was going to be something going on the whole time. He turns around with a full face paint. And (laughs) (laughs) And like wizards do, he used her to get the information. So ha back, you know, from... From earlier when you said ha to me and I was all like, ah, gotcha, (laughs) bitch. (laughs) Well, Zed thanks the mother confessor for saving him. Apparently it was a close call. Like he knew it was going to go on, but he also knew that he was going to be a target. So it might have gone very poorly. Well, yeah, there's a chance that the mother, that the the Morton Sith was told kill Zed. Yes. A, there is a small 100%. chance that was a thing. So, like, he was risking it by doing this. I do think it's funny that when Abby apologizes, she's like, I tried to tell you, bitch. No. You, you don't get to say I tried to tell you <laughs> when you waited until the actual thing was happening to be like, hey, don't use your magic. Oh, yeah. And, like, didn't even, you couldn't even get it all out. Oh, we're exposed. I, yeah. You had, like, fucking five days on the way here <laughs> to talk to me about this shit. That's you why. do not get to tell me you tried to tell me. That's why the travel was omitted from the book. Yeah. Because it would have happened at any point during that. She'd been like, look, I'm sorry. Let's not fucking do this because I actually plotted with the bad guys to get you killed and I feel terrible about it now. And if she didn't, then the reader would feel like, no, bitch, th- you can't believe anything she says because she didn't wait until the last second to turn. Yeah, no. Sorry, <laughs> continue. Well, she tells him that she hopes his trick was worth it. Mm, tricks are magic. And Argo isn't expecting the Mord Sith back until dawn, so they have a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. But he knows that our troops are here, so we have to act fast. And I say that we act fast and take a quick little break and be back right after this. Is it even worth asking one of you to get the meads this time? Absolutely not. Okay. (laughs) Aaron, my friend, what are we drinking today? From B Nectar is Zombie Killer. So it's a cider mead combo. It is 
uh, 5.5% in its tart cherry sweetness up front with full yet crisp fermented cider. Heavy apple skin complements the cherry. Sweet cream honey <laughs> rounds the flavor and balances the tartness of the cherry. Light carbonation lifts the flavor while the honey smooths the overall mouthfeel. Finishes crisp and clean. Mm, I didn't. don't know what happened there. You didn't finish crisp and clean. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> you guys weren't able to see the amount Aaron's head was moving while he was recording. It looked like he was oh, I dodging baseballs or something. <laughs> Every second word, my head went from left to right. <laughs> And then right to left. <laughs> I was practicing my boxing skills while reading that. Zombie Killer, which if you guys get a chance and hit pause real quick, Google Zombie Killer because the art for it, it's gnarly and I like it. It's a cherry. Yeah. With a face. Yeah. Uh, using a sword, a yeah. tanto blade specifically. Oh yeah, two-handed. To hack a... Cherry. Um, well, another cherry? A bad cherry. It's a, a zombie, zombie cherry. A zombie, oh, okay, a different Get shaped cherry. <laughs> when I think we can all agree he should be swinging at the bee that's right above his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't lie. I've had my first sip. They're on to something here mixing meads and cherries because that, and I apologize for my language, is smooth AF. Yeah, Dude, this I, is I really like this good. Lot. I like it a lot. I am curious what Jade thinks because I know her, she's had a bit of a issue with ciders because they're too tart. I don't know what exactly the right verbiage is, but <laughs> yeah, they're not your favorite because they got that, they got that, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. You didn't seem to cringe when you drank it. I don't. <laughs> I did not cringe. It was very nice. It went down very, very smooth. I don't know if I could drink a whole bunch of them and not have a tummy ache still. <laughs> yeah. I think that it's good, and I would give it eight cherries. Eight zombie cherries? No, good oh. cherries. <laughs> the ones you can still eat. They actually have the ingredients on the can. Oh, wow. Which is kind of nice. You don't see that too often. No, that's not normal. Apple juice, honey, cherry juice, potassium sorbate, and potassium metabisulfate. It the, stops the yeast from doing the thing yeah. once it's in the can. I think you have to have some good art and science to combine two things like cer uh, cider and mead together. Seed, if you will. And It's actually called the sizer. I'm with Jade. I believe this is an eight. This is very good. Not an all-day drinker. Yeah, I but agree. But a little one-off on a hot summer day. Oh, this will crisp me right up. I think this is an eight all day long. I think it's right in the pocket, but I'm with you. I'm not drinking, not that I generally do this anyways, but I'm not going to finish a full six pack. Didn't know we were drinking with a bitch. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Challenge accepted, motherfucker. Well, I think well, we maybe yeah. get back to the chapter and yeah. then we have ourselves a drink off after <laughs> this. You, me, in the backyard, because Jade will get mad if we make a mess. <laughs> Right uh, after this. Ooh, okay, let's do it in a couple months. It's hot out. <laughs> and we're back. Sword Town. Sword Town. <laughs> I remembered it this time. <laughs> only because I was reminded twice, and it's the first thing I have to do. <laughs> well, Abby asks if the Mother Confessor is going to kill the Mord Sith, who is still screaming in pain in the brush. And she tells Abby that Mord Sith aren't like other people. They don't recover from the touch of a confessor. So she'll eventually die in agony, but Zed needs his power back now. So it's the humane and easier, better thing to do. Yeah, see, we aren't going to torture motherfuckers. We're just going to kill her. No, just it's kill fine. her. Well, and this does a, a tiny bit touch on like what you were bringing up earlier about explaining this. Yeah. Not enough. A little bit. Yeah. It, it's like she will die in agony. It doesn't say most people aren't yeah. in agony during a confession. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean they don't recover? So there is a little bit of pain, but you recover quicker? Like, can, can we just spend five minutes on this real quick? Yeah. Well, especially. I don't think so. Because, oh, well, I guess maybe this is just because of where we are in history and, true, and true. geographic. Well, not currently, but like normally <laughs> uh, <laughs> in America, when you think of confession, and especially when you see something with torture, you're like, oh, okay, so she gets confessions via torture. That's mm -hmm, how she mm -hmm. does her work, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but 
Yeah, it would just be nice if somebody told Abby that that's not the mother confessor's M.O. all the time. Oh, yeah. And it's not to torture because they're confessed. She right. doesn't need to torture anybody to get the information. Right. She does this other thing that gets the information. Right. What is kind of left out that they like the actual thing that does the damage to the human body. We know there's a concussion, right? So yeah. an explosion, if you take out the fire of it, it's still a lot of air and it can still cut a person in half depending yeah. on how big the explosion is. What we don't really have a good, clear sense of is how violent is this thunder without sound? We know if you're close, it's extreme. And we know if you're not necessarily next to, but kind of nearby, you're fine. Yeah. So I don't know if it's like, look, if you're right next to them or a Mord Sith, it's like a whole ass grenade going off in your hand and could kill several people. You know what I mean? Uh, it just depends if that magic can filter through you without hitting anything. And, and I think that's based off intent. And I guess the question of does it hurt to have your mind rendered in that way? Like just mentally. And <laughs> that, oh, yeah. It, that's a lot for a brain probably to handle. So there might be a little bit of pain that comes with that adjustment. <laughs> you mean getting scrambled like soup? <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty traumatic but event. Still remembering I would imagine. everything. It's a strange thing. Yeah. Well, and like it does say that the gla the the glass, the grass had was flattened around the mother confessor and the Mord Sith. Yeah. It's so a there is of absolutely a physical thing happening in addition to what's happening in the mind or soul or what have you. We're gonna have to do a little bit of research and look at a lot of these confessions and maybe see how they compare to one another as to who is around and who is affected to get a more solid sense of how big this concussion actually is. Well, yeah. especially since a lot of, not, not a lot, but some of the more recent uh, mm -hmm. instances of confession, I think have been accompanied by the Kantar. So they've been much more violent oh, than yeah, a normal confession, too. you know? And then, and then, like you said, we've never actually seen a Mord Sith confession. So, yeah, I mean... Somewhere between normal and Kandar. <laughs> it's right in there somewhere. It's in there. Yeah. Look, it's all on a scale. How big, yeah. how angry are you? That's yeah. how big the bomb yeah. is. Yeah. That's how things work for Richard. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> we got track record. It makes sense to me. Well, then the moment Abby had been waiting for finally arrives. Zed looks right into her eyes and says, it's time to get Jana back. Here we go. Woo. It's the moment. Yeah. But then he says, you'll have until morning. So better get on that. Yeah. Wait, what do you, I thought you were rescuing my daughter, Zed. Yeah. I thought that's what we said was going to happen. What yeah, do you I mean I, I have help. until morning? I've got some shit to do. You're actually going to be doing like pretty much all the work. <laughs> so cool. Did I not explain that to you? Cool. 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 <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, she's fucking confused. She goes, well, I'm supposed to be doing this? He goes, don't worry. I'll explain everything while you just get naked real quick. It's, mm -hmm. He says, take off your clothes. And yeah, it's, while you take off your clothes. It's uncomfortable. But I don't know. I, I get that there's not very many other ways to say that, but I think it's just the abrupt way that he hasn't explained anything, and then he's like, take off your clothes, which is a very vulnerable thing. Yeah. And obviously he knows more than you do and he has all these plans and you're like, I don't know what you're going to do to me after I do that, though. So can we elaborate? Yeah, it was just like my recent trip to the doctor's office. I had to, you know, lower my pants and we were just having a perfectly fine conversation. And he's like, all right, show me the goods. And instantly like, ah, uh, mm, but do I have to, though? <laughs> <laughs> Except this isn't a doctor. It's just no. a random old dude I was, that's supposed yeah. to be doing most of the work, and he's asking <laughs> you to get naked in the middle of the woods. I was in a place at a doctor, yeah. a specific doctor, in fact, where this would probably be asked. I knew this going in. This is a random dude yeah. that you just went to for well, help. This is the yesterday. first wizard. This isn't a that random a, dude. To me, yeah, as a, a woman, powerful, he's a random, random dude. dude. Hey, we're, look, I'm pretty sure we're still kind of in the same realm of barbers double as doctors. I mean, yeah, so, like, maybe a little bit. Maybe but, wizards uh, double as doctors. Hey, man or bear, I'm just saying. 
I know Fair. wizards don't I double don't as barbers because Zed's hair would be a lot better we'll talk if after. that were the okay. case. <laughs> 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 well, okay. Now, Abby has to do this plan, right? Mm -hmm. They have the knocked out Mord Sith. So we do a little cutaway. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, Abby is disguised as the Mord Sith. So now she has the tight red leather on. Again, another behind the scenes moment. Thought that I had technical glitches in the Kindle because I'm like, what happened? That we were in camp, now we're not. Like, oh, okay, time jump. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Would have preferred him to be a little bit more subtle. These were very abrupt. <laughs> Listen, we just came through a portal and have been transported. True. Time's been weird. You got to get more used to things. Just, That's true. Just, you just go Damn. with it. You just got to go with real it. Real life ain't subtle. That's right. Things yeah. are just different now. Get with the plan. Yeah. Catch up. Aaron thought his brain just put Abby in the Mord Sith outfit because he just likes it better that way. And he's just like, it's, yeah, everybody yeah. was wearing tight red leather. I did think somehow I tabbed over to my fan fiction. So that was <laughs> a bit jarring. <laughs> Disguised as a deadly moored Sith, Abby walks into the Daharan camp determined to find her family. Her instructions are to look mean, check, growl at anyone that speaks to you, and always keep the weird leather stick in your hand. Oh, yeah. It is hilarious to me that they did not fully... Like, Zed probably let her know, look, it's a weapon, it's a whole fucking thing, but she doesn't know what it is. So she's like, all right, weird stick, just keep the thing and make it look... Pointed at people, you know, make them fucking nervous around you. It's it, hilarious. It did say that she was told it involved magic, but it didn't matter the specifics because she can't use it. Exactly. But it's not actually going to do anything at all. But the implication is that it might. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's helpful, very great for her that it's nighttime because I really think oh, yeah. that, you know, certain people can act angry and just. It, it doesn't matter how good of an actor you are in this situation, really, because you don't have to talk that much. But I think there are a good chunk of people who, even if you tell them to look mean, they're going to look, they're just, they're just not going to be able to pull it off very yeah. well. Like, you know, they don't hold themselves. It, like, if you're a meek person and you've been pushed underneath people's foot for your whole life, trying to stand up and walk like a Mord Sith would walk would be very difficult. So I think. It being nighttime is going to lend very much to her her character building. <laughs> well, and that's how we got into this situation in the first place. She was meek. Mariska yeah. showed up yeah. and was like, hey, do the thing. Now, granted, it wasn't just meekness. They were threatening her daughter. That has a fucking heavy weight yeah. in it, too, you know, I would imagine. But she just kind of went, oh, okay, to keep herself safe also. But just because it's easier to do that than to go against it and potentially get killed right now or have your daughter murdered. Well, and if she wasn't so meek when she was awarded an audience with the first wizard the first time, yeah, she wouldn't have had to beg to the mother confessor and the sorceress to, hey, is I need to do this. Like, if she would have just done what she was told and sacked up, we, you know, this would have been done a day earlier. Sacked up. <laughs> I'm just thinking there are, there are some people who when they try to look scary, yeah, oh, just yeah. end up looking cuter, like a little kid, like like oh, people, like a little kitty yeah, making a mean yeah, face. Yeah, and pe there are people who look like that when they're trying to be pretend to be mean, and you know, even in this situation where she's supposed to be mad and mean, she might come across as I gotta growl and look mean at these people, and they may just look <laughs> at her. Whereas if she was a Mord Sith, even if she had the same body type. Growing up grizzled, you don't come across in that like bubblegum, yeah. scary type way. So I just, you know, there could be problems with somebody not being able to carry this. This hundred <laughs> percent. If yeah. Abby gives one unsure look, yep, the whole jig is up. Mm -hmm. Because Mord Sith don't do that. They always know exactly what's say, supposed to happen. Or she walks up to somebody, they look at her, and she goes, Arr. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Arr. you, <laughs> yeah. Well, nah. it, it even says too they tied the Mord Sith hair br or braid into her hair. They don't have the same hair color. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if she fucking went in at dawn, the first person to see her is gonna be like, "You're 
no, something fucking yeah, is going on yeah, here. Be, be, I'm going to so go you, get a real Mord yeah. Sith. She comes in with the wrong <laughs> lore and says, I've tied the hair of my mama Mord Sith and her mama Mord Sith before her. And they're like, that's not how this fucking works. <laughs> yeah. You're a fucking faker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just thinking about myself. Like, I know I can look scary, but I also feel like if I was trying to look scary, <laughs> it's probably not going to look that scary. Off. You got to be a good actor. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Jade, are you upset? <laughs> <laughs> Stomping my foot everywhere. <laughs> Abby moves through the camp, watching some men prepare for battle while the rest of the camp sleeps. She manages to stay undetected until almost dawn, but she still hasn't been able to find the people she needs to. That is when her bracelet begins to warm her skin again. She realizes that the bracelet's warmth moves her in a certain direction. This is like Chris Angel. Uh, we did a whole episode about it where he, he like uh, found... Yeah. The key in a car in a lot is really fucking crazy. Anyways, she goes towards the place that makes the bracelet warmer and finds a tent with who else but Mariska sleeping outside it. Ooh, <laughs> spicy. She found the exact place. Like it took her a minute, but she walked right there. I mean, good thing she had the fucking bracelet. Otherwise, she would have been fucked for what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where do you even begin yeah. otherwise? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you know what you would normally do is you would look up at your little tiny map in the corner and look for the diamond and then follow it. <laughs> you you got to hit right button. Hit right button. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You got to hit right button. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm, <laughs> on, your quest. I'm, on, I'm on keyboard. I don't have a right button. I'm on keyboard. Oh, it. Oh, M. M yeah, for map. Yeah, yeah. Put, put, pull up M. J for uh, journal. It's going to show up, show your way, <laughs> like your your objectives. Ah. And that'll help you a lot. Because otherwise you're great. just kind of wandering. Side quest and main quest. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, I guess we were, we did kind of want to find Mariska back, didn't we? <laughs> uh, well, she's reminded in this moment that her mom told her to always wear the bracelet and someday it'll be of great value to you. I thought it was when, you know, she should have given it away for the money earlier, but... <laughs> Sell that motherfucker! That's probably why people don't trust me with valuable things. Because I would have given it away with the people were like, oh, she said it would be valuable to me. And this Just bitch... Just the first to, instance. Yeah, yeah, this bitch Sold. told me that I could sell it. This is that moment, right? Gosh, I know we have to go save the world and everything, but I just got 10 bucks. Yeah, I'm bad, I'm bad at reading signs correctly, I guess. <laughs> well, she might be a little bit weary about hot, how hot the bracelet is getting because it's actually very hot now. Abby knows that her daughter will be in that tent. She makes it to the door without arousing suspicion, but when she steps inside, Jana is nowhere to be found. Instead, there's some other little girl. Yeah. Bracelet's a fucking liar. What? Yep, not Jana. She just leave. I, I think. Know. I think my mom gave me the wrong bracelet. I'm like, ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Who are you? Oh, this was my aunt's bracelet. Are you here to rescue me? No, I was here for somebody else. <laughs> somebody must have my bracelet. Fuck. Have you seen other little girls? <laughs> yeah. Can What's we ask the some questions? situation yeah. here? Well, Abby is crushed. She's not going to be able to find her family before sunrise. There's just not enough time. But she could save this girl. Instinctually, Abby scoops her up into her arms. After seeing her face in the candlelight, she realizes that this has to be Zed's daughter. It had to have been part of like the bracelet, maybe, that something magical is going on here, because I don't think I would be able to recognize someone's daughter after only spending a couple days with them. No? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't... I think I agree. Like, kids do look like their parents, but it's not always a one-for-one -one ringer. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, in the sense of maybe exact same uh, hair color and eye color like it is, like, that would probably give a good clue, but it's not the end-all, be-all. I think it definitely depends on the kid, because for ex our son Xavier's whole fucking life... <laughs> Anytime anybody's seen him, they've gone, oh, that's Nate's kid for sure. Yeah. yeah. Immediately yeah. upon seeing them from birth. Fair so, point. I would Fair say point. he's a mini me, but he's taller than me now. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. You, they, you have the same exact facial structure. So. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. You know, all right. That's, We're like the same okay. dude. And you guys, he had blonde hair and blue eyes for a long time. So even with different coloring, it was like. <laughs> you yeah. uh, may not know this about me, but so did I. Yeah. There are no, pictures of me with 
uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, and a little sailor suit. Yeah, yeah. I, you told me you look like a young Ryan Gosling. <laughs> he's got little curls and everything. It's go- it, He's a gorgeous little baby. No, no. Young Ryan Gosling <laughs> looked like me. Well played. Well played. <laughs> All right. Well, Abby tells her everything is going to be okay. She's going to get her out of here. They just have to play a little pretend to do it. Cool. We can play pretend. Pretend is easy. You're a kid. This is hopefully something you've been doing like your whole childhood. Won't go deeper into that anyways. Um, <laughs> just in the way that, you know. I, don't, you don't have to go deeper. <laughs> I, well, now I feel like I need to. Just like, no, this is the trap I fall into. <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> but I'm not going to say something crazy. <laughs> Kids play pretend all the time. They That's have a true. lot of downtime because their needs are met. She had a good, healthy upbringing, and she was able to fuck around, hopefully. That is the exact opposite of the things that Aaron normally says. Exactly. Yes, That's what right. I'm saying. I'm yeah. fine. Aaron's yeah. always like, don't, yeah, careful. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to say anything like you do. <laughs> but here's the plan. Abby is going to put a rope around the girl's neck to give the illusion that she's a prisoner while they walk her out of the camp. She'll go fine, right? Disguise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Mord Sith costume goes a long ways to help, but that, that, that's the whole fucking plan. We're just going to try and sneak you out. Hopefully nobody bats an eye. So Abby's acting prowess is going to be on test. Yes. Yeah, they get to roll with advantage. <laughs> I only roll with advantage when I have a beer in my hand. So maybe we should take a little break, uh, get our refills. Maggie's been pretty good about that. I'm sure they'll be here in a second. And we'll be back right after this. Right after this. Smart Town. And we're back for the remainder of part five of Dead of Bones. Not chapter. Not chapter. <laughs> part five. Part five. And in this part, Abby is leading unnamed girl, mm-hmm. hopefully to freedom. They've put this rope around her waist to create the illusion that she is a prisoner. And they get outside, and the guards immediately ask questions, because probably the look on Abby's face, right? Probably the not being totally sure of what she's doing. Also, this is Zed's daughter. I'm assuming that the guards know either that it's Zed's daughter or that it is a high-profile person's daughter if you don't know that the plan is to take her out, you're going to fucking question that. You should. Do you realize who this is, Aaron? This is Richard's mom. Yeah. 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 To that point, I understand we've discussed why Terry may have done that. Yeah. Before in the past. But the fact that she comes up in here and she's a child and she's an active, alive person and we still don't find out her name. Yeah. It's- I know why I get it, but I'm also a little bit annoyed because, like, this bitch doesn't even know her this girl's name. You don't ask her the whole time. Never what? comes up. What? <laughs> <laughs> Classic excuse. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Way to not humanize the child that you just rescued, but cool. Well, Abby points the Ajeel at them and tells them to shut up or she'll have him gutted for breakfast and just keeps on walking. The girl even drags her feet behind her to, like, make it look real, and the guards don't do shit. Mm-hmm. She must have delivered the line well. That's the thing. Like, that's that's the moment that you're rolling the dice on, and you're oh, like, yeah. am I going to deliver this well without, like, my voice shaking in any way? Yeah, if they, if they let on at all that you're terrified in the moment. It's yeah. all done. Man, oh, there's yeah, so yeah. much pressure. One tiny yeah. little voice crack, and the guard probably stops her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, luckily... Abby is able to follow the hills up towards the river. Zed told her exactly where to cross and told her not to cross anywhere else because he'd set up traps for the Daharan troops. I mean, they're either going to be coming through or if she's being chased, she has one clear path to get through safely. Everything else is, I don't know, fucking rigged with wizard's fire or whatever else. But like... The extraction bit. She has to get out safely on her own. There is yeah. nobody coming in to get her. Mm-hmm. The amount of pressure on her is incredible right now. Oh, Hondo P. I yeah. mean, it's it's quite literally pass fail. As soon as anything goes wrong, she fails. Well, and the absurdity of of just sending her into an army, like an enemy army camp, and being like, "Go find your daughter." It it it's such a weird thing because we find out that she's her daughter. 
seems to be important, right? Her daughter mm-hmm. and her husband seem to be being kept and tortured or whatever, but also not really, right? Because they were just coming after Zed. Mm-hmm. Not so, important enough for them to not be captured and tortured. Right. Yeah. But the whole town was. In her brain, they were being kept in a separate tent. They could just be down in the pits with everybody else. She has no way of knowing in this massive fucking oh, yeah. army camp where the fuck to look. Yeah. So the odds of her, like, the pressure is giant. She had everywhere to look. It's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And she had very slim to any chance that she was going to find anybody. And now she has to get out with somebody and not even the right fucking person. Yeah, she was planning on doing an extraction, right? She was planning on going in for her daughter. The switch up is that it's not her daughter, but it's Zed's daughter. So it's still somebody we've talked about recently and is like, to put it in very blunt terms, valuable target. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it still behooves her to get her out of there. Well, that and it kind of, uh, I think it's another thing to the whole thing. Where's the age line? Like, yeah, you found someone under the age line. Are you going to leave them just because they're not your daughter? Oh, yeah. You need to save the people. I mean, you even said she picked her up and she was planning on yeah. taking the child yeah. prior to realizing who it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's true. So not we find prior. Out. Before she realized that it was Zed's daughter before she made contact. But her mother, like her motherly instincts kicked in and she just scooped it up. Like <laughs> scooped her up. <laughs> I'm just saying, I guess that... Her mother really instincts kicked in, and she's like, "I can't leave oh, this kid here." Before she yeah. realized, before she who realized it who it yes. was, so yeah, she was gonna. Right. She knew she didn't have enough time to get her kid. She was gonna get this kid out either way, mm-hmm. and she fucking does. Yeah, she gets the hell out of there. She makes her escape, but she freezes when she sees a fog, uh, like a cloud of fog, a fog of right? cloud. Yeah, this is one of Zed's <laughs> fucking safety features, right? He had warned her to stay away from any weird. Foggy cloud of death. Mm, just yeah. if you see any weird foggy clouds of death, just leave them be. Just don't go in them. Because they're foggy clouds of death. <laughs> could be acid damage. You could turn inside out. Who fucking knows? Yeah, who knows? He didn't explain what it was exactly, right? But Abby does kind of assume it's poison of some kind. And they are to be avoided. The sound of the water told her she was getting close to the river. So she takes the rope off of the girl and runs. They're out of the sight line of the enemy now. Now it's time to go fucking fast. Book it! Yeah, fucking all gas, baby. All gas. She thought she could see the light coming from in between the trees, but when they got a little closer, she saw that it wasn't actually sunlight. It was magic. Ooh. Yeah. Magic, (laughs) like, super fucking bright. She thought it was the horizon. (laughs) It has to be, you know, maybe this is slightly too dramatic, but awe-inspiring. That's the fucking sun that makes it. So if you're even close to that, something fucking cool is going on here. I just figure in the way that wizard's fire is a thing, right? But it's this fire compared to the sun. Whatever this person is doing is incredible. You know what I think I love? I think I love, because you're nobody's wrong here. And, and the, the sun is awe-inspiring. It's a very powerful thing. I think it's because this is a an audio medium, right? So we can't show something so grandeur. So everybody's like, the sun! Ooh, the sun! And like I, the little green guys from Toy Story. And it's on point. Everybody is absolutely correct. But that's what is causing me to laugh at. And I can see both of you guys looking at me, being like, I, trying to explain yourselves. And I just, that is, that's what's happening over here, okay? That, and I said awe-inspiring, and I vocalized that by going, ooh, ooh the sun. <laughs> I like the sun. <laughs> Can't begin to describe it. Ooh. <laughs> Have you seen that? We've all seen it. So it's Wild. awesome. It's amazing. Okay, good. <laughs> there was a low, thin sound and a burning smell hanging around the river bank. But there was Zed, standing on an odd-shaped rock with dark and wavering shapes floating around him in the air like smoke. With the light twisting up around him, it was the most enchanting and frightening thing she had ever seen. He is full-on sorceress's apprentice, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Sorcerers. Why, I said sorceresses. There's too many S's. I knew what you meant. Hey, could be a girl. We got there. It it could be either. I'm not saying it couldn't be. I'm (laughs) saying that's just not the name of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) That's all. But the scariest thing was the huge molten sphere 
floating in the air, hissing and bubbling whenever the water touched it. Oh. <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> oh. Well, what's oh. here? Oh, wow. Oh, oh hey, wow. That, hey, that's pretty neat, buddy. Oh, wow. What are you going to do with that? Got a floating great. sphere there, huh? Just, oh, just wow. working on your big molten sphere of exploding? Pretty cool sphere. Neat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I got to get going. Uh, <laughs> let me know how your sphere building goes. <laughs> Transfixed, Abby let the girl slip to the ground. She throws her arms up and says, Papa! Mm. He was too far away to hear. But he heard. Because as we know about Zed, Zed hears. Zed turned to see his daughter and tears fill his eyes. This man who was talking with the dead looked like for the first time he had seen a true apparition. Yes. I, I can't imagine what that, what that would feel like. He was in the middle of his fucking wizard's rock thing, right? Which we know. Like a trance-like yeah. state. Is he, is he wearing clothes? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. He probably is. I thought right? that. I was wondering that when I read this. <laughs> was he naked this time? Yeah. He's always naked. He's always been naked every right? other time. Right. So he should be little. naked this time. He doesn't get naked every time, does he? Yes. Every time prior to this that or he's got it... on his wizard's rock, he's no, been naked. I thought he only got naked the once, like when Richard walked up on him on his rock. Well, uh, him and, him and so. Addie were talking. Maybe but that was a special sexy time. They've one. been up on the rock together. Yeah, but oh man, I don't remember if they did get naked first. You people, <laughs> mm. let us know if he has or has not been naked every time he's been on his wizard rock. But thus he, far, he's in not going to be naked now because it's his child that he's running right. to her daughter. It's supposed her. to be a, yeah. a, a heartening yes. scene. But I wondered. Yeah. <laughs> I wondered. <laughs> the thought was there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he leaps off the rock, charges through the water, and once he had her safe in his arms again, she began to mm. wail. She got her dad back. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, but then she's sad, and it's a sad She's thing. very sad. <laughs> And then she says sad things. She says, yeah. they hurt mama. That's the part. That's sad. <laughs> I can't. That's, uh, uh. He calms her and tells her that he knows and that everything is going to be all right. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts, Jade? No, it's just sad. Because <laughs> she doesn't even know. Like, she was taken. She knows that they hurt her mom. She had to watch them break all her bones, her arms and her legs, and just leave her there bleeding and dying. And they actually pro they probably told her she was going to fucking die. So maybe she does know. But maybe she doesn't. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe she just knows she was hurt really bad and she hopes that her dad, who's fucking magical and can he fix yeah. anything in the whole world. Dad can make it better again. Fixed it. So even in this moment, he's like, she's like, it's sad, but she probably still has hope. Right? They hurt mama. It was sad. It was terrible for me. But but she's still at home right now, right? Yeah. That's the unspoken yeah. part. That yeah. he's going to be like, no, she's not. No, she's Ugh. not, baby girl. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very fucking sad. Mm -mm. And I mean, in a weird, like, not a weird parallel, but it's just like when you're a kid, you're looking up at your mom and dad, and hopefully you're thinking, man, they can make it happen. Yeah. Everything's going to be okay, because I have my mom and dad right here. I'm good. That kind of security. And then even more for her with my dad is like first wizard. He can literally make magic happen. Everything's going to be fine. And like, no, he can't. I, he can, but he can't fix everything. Yeah. And that's a, a hurdle she's going to have to learn. Yeah. Ugh. Well, as beautiful as the <laughs> sight was, it made Abby feel even worse for what she had done. She almost got this man killed. By the time Zed turned to her, and smiles, his baby girl is asleep. That doesn't seem to be upset at all. He's got a good ass reason to celebrate. He oh, 100%. is completely relieved. He's like, look, this was really the only thing that really fucking mattered to me. And it's, this is, I'm fine. I have everything I need now. Well, Sans my wife. And I mean, we don't know for sure at this point, but it doesn't seem like that's what he thought was going to happen. Like, I think he assumes. She was coming back with Jana, and his daughter was done. So, yeah. you know, it's like, it, this, this turned out better than I could have planned for me. Yeah. Although he is, I do feel like, because he's so, like, okay with what happened for him, and he's like, all right, I'm doing the thing that I'm doing. The plan went to fruition in some way. 
He's a little dismissive of her. I feel of like. Abby. Yeah. Like, yeah hey, I'm, of what just happened? I'm really her. sorry. Like this was supposed to be the one shot, and you came back without your daughter. Yeah, he didn't. He doesn't say that. Yeah. I, well, exactly. That's the yeah. thing that he should have, could have said. Yeah. Thank you, and I, I'm sorry. Yeah, but he is. You know, he's probably got his mind on his daughter. Yeah. You know, just came back. She's finally safe. She's sleeping in his arms. It is a sweet sight. But also, we find out that he. He puts a little spell on her to put her to sleep. Yeah. So she's not like wandering off anywhere in the meantime. Well, and also, I can't entertain you right now or talk to you or, or like deal with your grief at this po- moment. So it's best if she just is asleep yeah. and away somewhere safe. In a wild turn, though, he does ask Abby to bring her somewhere while yeah. she's asleep. Me as Ed. No, absolutely fucking not. I just got my daughter back. I will put her somewhere where I know that she will be safe myself she's because gonna... there is no way that she's getting out of my sight again, yeah. period. She'll be right there on the hill. Oh, You two must... are going to sit right there on the hill. He has to trust Abby because if he didn't, there's no way you're going to give your child to somebody that you don't trust. I think that's why it's so wild to me that he doesn't acknowledge what's happening here. Yeah. You know, that he's like, Take my daughter and get her safe and like make sure tuck her in and love her. He doesn't say you can't love your daughter right now. Do it for my like. Yeah, there's so many layers here that it's just wild that he's like, yeah, take mine and do what you can't do for yours without saying that. Oh, I I would have a hard time. Yeah, it's it's really difficult because it's not your daughter. And that's got to be at the forefront of your mind. You know, it is maybe cathartic for her. Like, hey, above all else right now, you're a mom. Yeah. So you need to do some of those motherly things. Hug a child, put them to sleep, make sure they're safe and comfortable. That will be good for Abby to be able to do those things in the absence of her daughter. Yes. But it's not going to be easy either. But the whole time, like you said, in the front of your mind, every time you touch that child, you know, it's, this isn't, this isn't. It's bad. not my daughter. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's cathartic, but it also, it's a special form of hell. Yeah. Just for Abby. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> what I was thinking at the end of this. and bad. That really bad. It's framed so sweetly at the end of the chapter. Yeah. And I wasn't, I'm not trying to take away from it, but as I was reading it, I was thinking about the, the exact personal hell that that would be mm-hmm. if, say, Jackson was being held in an enemy camp and I went in to save him and got a different kid out and he was still stuck there and I had to go nurture this child afterwards Ugh. no <laughs> without even getting a thank you or a sorry from their parent yeah. mm. i mean abby is happy for zed i right? know i know even though she feels pride for helping yeah right as she ran home she was dying with grief for failing to find her own family and her own daughter she sets the child in an abandoned house she had seen earlier that day and not being able to help herself, kisses her brow before leaving to beg Zed for just a little bit more time to find Jana. Zed owes her a debt. He still hasn't paid it. Enough fucking around. It's time for him to get this thing done. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, I guess that is the thing. I, I kind of finished here, and I wasn't really thinking about the fact that she isn't... Because if you think that this is the end here... You just crumble into a ball and sob on top of the child that you just said. Yeah. Like, no, I'm just crying now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But no, he, she's going back to try again. When I think kind of to your point, she's gonna try like, to. it does say in here that like the way it's written, I think that's how you're supposed to feel. Because the way Terry wrote this is he says, Abby settled the dead weight of the sleeping child into her bed. And I think that's supposed to be a glimpse into what Abby kind of feels like this child is. Because it's like, I could do all this faster if I didn't have to carry this child back because this one's not mine. I had to save it because I had to because I'm a mom too, but this is not my child. It's just dead weight. And that's why it kind of says at the end, like, what is unable to resist, she does kiss the child of like, hey, you're safe now. So it's like the mother instincts took over. But yeah, hey, motherfucker, that's not paid. We came here to get my my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Might have been a very bittersweet moment. I'm sure it was meaningful in a way. Yeah. And Zed obviously is very relieved. But yeah, as far as Abby is concerned, mission is not done. My this, guy. this is where my earlier thoughts in the last part of like this whole thing is, is a monkey's paw curling where it's like, Abby, you asked Zed to help your daughter. 
Like, you didn't word it exactly correct. Yeah. So you're going to get what you asked for, <laughs> but it's not what you thought you were going to get. It never is. Nope. Fucking wizards. Yeah. Fucking wizards. I will say, if she thought she was going back, though, <laughs> this is not nice. And I don't know what I would have done. But I probably would have brought that bitch into the woods, tied her little rope to a tree, <laughs> and been like, you stay here. I'll be back. And the, you know? Oh, before you went, wait, you're hold waiting, the fuck you're on. You're wasting time. You are, you're saying, okay, okay. So you're, you're saying that you <laughs> would have got, gotten Zed's daughter yeah. out of the camp. Yeah. Just like just outside. Far yeah. enough outside yeah. to where you're not seen. Yeah. And then. Out of the circle. Immediately you know? become the bad guy again by tying her to a tree. Not bad, I'll come back. By not saying you're I'll safe, wait here. <laughs> Instead, you tie her to a tree, well, preventing her safe. from getting it's away fine. again, and then running, and then leaving her alone in the woods, yeah. Yeah. where there's bears and wolves. No, and she'll be fine. I there's an army nearby. There's no bear. No bears are coming over there. She'll be fucking She's fine. She's like, excuse me, <laughs> this is actually worse. I thought you meant <laughs> she should tie her up and use her to get Zed to give her more time. That she was going to use her as a Oh no. my God. Hey, I right, saved your Zed. daughter. No. She's tied up situation. somewhere in the forest. Now I have her. <laughs> no, I'm just now talking. What are you going to do? I'm talking <laughs> logistically, right? No. You yes. only have a limited amount of time to get shit done. <laughs> you you s- are you, not wasting yeah. time bringing the prisoner back. You set the pri- her down and say, there, yeah. there are other children I'm going to go try to save. Stay here. I will come back. I promise. Right. If I don't come back by night, by sun, full sunrise, just walk that way. Yeah, Just yeah. walk that way. Yeah. But I'm going to come back. I'll That's be right yeah. back. The tying her up again oh was the God. thing that got me. I was like, no. Oh, well, you no. wanted to wander. That's yeah. true. Well, like a leash, not like That's a prisoner. Scary shit might happen, but I need you to really wait right you exactly know, here. You know when you say something, though, like, <laughs> like a leash, not a prisoner, <sighs> it really puts into perspective that everybody on a leash is a prisoner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. You don't think your dog is a prisoner when you put him on a leash. Nobody but is. But also. <laughs> he is. <laughs> it turns out maybe that's the truth. But oh. it's just to keep her safe. It'll be fine. Yeah. Right. That's all. I was just saying. She wasted time <laughs> trying to keep the kid safe and bring it back. Like, no, absolutely not. We go back as fast as possible. You do as many runs as you can. Back and forth before taking the whole group back. Absolutely. That's what you're saying. That's yeah. That's logically the way you should fucking do this. <laughs> Also, if she dies in the woods, I don't care because it's not my kid. Just saying. Wow. I promised to get her out of camp. Didn't say she no, was going to be alive, I didn't, bitch. I didn't promise shit to this kid. Nobody even knows I, knows I saved her. This is a bonus. This is a bonus action. So she could die if it means that I saved my daughter. This is the right? cherry, not the cake. Right. You can't have a that cherry on top of a cake goal. if you don't have a cake. Okay, sorry. Continue. <laughs> That's my truth. So... You save a couple few kids first, leave them all tied to trees, go back inside the Daharan camp, find your daughter, and then run past all the kids tied to trees <laughs> with your daughter. If all right, you have I didn't, to, I didn't if think you we could get worse. To, we did get worse. <laughs> if you have to, if they can't untie that's themselves, what I'm that's their if fucking you have problem, to. right? Oh it's a bonus God, if you can. Oh my God. If you can't, <laughs> It ain't, it's, nobody knows. You two are fucking. Nobody even fucking knows. You two are fucking un, the kids. unhinged. Oh my God. <laughs> be your dark secret until uh. you take your grave. It's fine. It'll be fine. You can drink it away. Well, shit. <laughs> You've heard our truth, but we want to hear yours. If you wanted to let us know what you thought of this chapter, or I'm sorry, shit, I fucked it up. This trunk or this episode, you can write in your journey books to podcastatt at gmail.com or follow us on any of our social needs. You can also go to patreon.com slash podcastatt if you really enjoyed this episode. We've got ad-free episodes. (laughs) We've got side quests, a whole bunch of cool stuff there for you to check out in between episodes. Yeah, do it. I dare you. <laughs> you know, I've been told that every tear is a happy tear over there. I've heard that too. I think that's going to be really a thing. wise said that. I think very smart, intelligent. Yes. We can only hope to be as wise as the person who said that. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Whoever that was. Someday I when I when happen, I grow but... up, I hope to be that smart. <laughs> hey Maggie. 
Do we get a couple more here, please? Thank you. I like, I like how it goes, we should have one more. Can I have a couple? Yeah, well, you know, one for now, one for the uh, road. Yeah. Over another, like, maybe two or three beers. Sounds good to me. Cool. Just a real quick four more, and we'll be on our way. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, very much for listening. We'll see you real soon. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, you heard him. Make it seven.